Hi, this is Marty Grimes with the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Coming up next on the People Behind Your Water, we're going to take a tour of the Silicon Valley Advanced Water Purification Center, a project that we've been working on with the City of San Jose and the City of Santa Clara, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the People Behind Your Water, Santa Clara Valley Water District's monthly program. And uh, this month we are not in an office, not sitting at a table. We're actually out in the field. We're at the Silicon Valley Advanced Water Purification Center, which is currently under construction, almost done. And uh, we're going to take a tour. We're going to follow the water, the path of the water. And uh, today I have with us several people, but we're going to start with Crystal Yesman, who uh, is a unit manager. Uh, over this plant and what else do, are you in charge of at the water district? Sure, I'm in charge of West Side Treated Water Operations. That's uh, this plant, also the Rinconada Water Treatment Plant, which feeds the west side of the valley for wholesale drinking water supply, and that includes the Campbell Well Field and the distribution piping on the west side. Okay, so you're making a lot of water for us. Uh, and uh, what is this plant going to do? Sure. Well, this is a recycled water plant, specifically an advanced recycled water treatment plant. And what we're doing here is we're um, treating secondary effluent from the water pollution control plant across the street that's run by the uh, city of San Jose and Santa Clara. And what we're taking is their secondary effluent and we're going to treat it even further so that it can be uh, create high quality water for industrial and landscaping uses. Okay, so the, the water that we produce here will be uh, going into the recycled water system for non-potable uses? Sure, yeah. Downstream of here is what's called the South Bay Water Recycling Distribution System. And they already deliver recycled water to, to customers throughout the county. But what we're going to do is we're going to add highly treated, advanced treated recycled water to, 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 to clean it up a little bit more so that it's a better use for those customers. Okay, so we're going to have some happy customers. Why is the, why is the better quality needed for those customers? Sure, so right now they receive a, a recycled water that has a total dissolved solid content of about 700, 750 milligrams per liter. And so when we blend those two together, it'll lower that total dissolved solid content and provide a higher quality water for their uses. And that's good in industrial uses because they don't have to maintain their systems as much? Or how does that work? Yeah, right. So with the lower total dissolved solid, um, their cooling towers or whatever treatment uh, processes they have in place will be, won't be as loaded as heavily and it will be less cost, costly to them to, uh, to use that water. And for landscaping uses, the lower salt content is good for the plants and the grass. Okay. And the plant overall is going to produce how much water? Well, it's rated to produce 8 million gallons per day. And uh, this is a state-of-the-art facility. We'll be doing a lot of testing and hopefully in the future be expanding that. Okay, so that's a good overview of the plant. Now I'm really excited to take a look at it. So uh, let's uh, head off to the next stop. Okay, great. All right, so we just <laughs> walked a few steps over from the influent pumps great. and now we're looking at what? Right, so from the influent pumps, which are 200 horsepower pumps, we then go to what's called auto strainers. So these are sort of our first straining mechanism for the treatment processes. And this is upstream of our membrane filtration. And the auto strainers are 300 microns and they automatically will backwash whenever the pressure differential gets too high. And so they're continuously working. And so we go from our influent pumps to the auto strainers. And from here, it's the uh, membrane filtration. Okay, so just the 300 microns, how big is, what is that? Is that like a human hair or how, how big is that? 300 microns, I would, yeah, it's about the size of a human hair. Okay, so we're already getting big chunks out of the water right. at this point. Right. So let's move on. Okay, we've, we've moved on a few more steps and now I am with Sam. And I'm going to let you pronounce your last name, Sam. Sam Bogada. Okay, Sam, uh, you, what your role here at uh, this plant is going to be what? I am the acting plant supervisor at the recycle plant. Okay, so you're, you're going to be in charge? Yes, I am. Okay, great. And uh, we're in front of the chemical tank area, right? So there's a lot of chemicals that are involved in this process? 
Yeah, in this process we have about four or five chemicals. Uh, the major ones are uh, the one we're looking at is sodium hypochlorite, 12.5% sodium hypochlorite. We have sulfuric acid chemical and we have uh, sodium hydroxide. And we also have a threshold inhibitor and sodium bisulfide. So that's a lot of different chemicals that uh, sound a little scary. You said sulfuric acid. What do you what do you do to make sure that this is safe for everybody? That do you have these pretty heavy duty chemicals here? Yeah, especially for employees and visitors coming to the site, we have a minimum of uh, personal protective uh, equipment that we require. As you can see, I'm wearing a hard hat, a uh, vest, and then we require goggles at least. So as you can see here, these are the yellow markers are the barriers. I'm supposed to be wearing a goggle. I'm not wearing goggles, Sam. So once you break this barrier. Uh, you're supposed to oh, okay, if I were to step three steps over, I would need those goggles. Do these, do these tanks even have chemicals in them yet? Yes, one of the tanks have chemicals in it so because we are in the process of testing. So it has a full chemical in one of the tanks. So um, I'm, I've, I've noticed that each of the tanks are sort of in a basin. Is that part of the safety uh, yes. aspect? Yes, because in case if something happens and the tanks rupture, that's the containment area was supposed to hold 110% of the tank capacity. So even if it ruptures, it will be contained. All right, so every, all the chemical could just, if there's, a, if there's some sort of accident, it all is released from the tank, it all will stay right here. Yeah, that, that's correct, yeah. It will be contained in the containment area and then it will be disposed accordingly. Okay, great. Well, let's move on to the next step. So we've now walked inside the processing building and I'm here with Steve Twitchell. Steve, what's your role? Uh, my role here at the district, I'm a water plant supervisor. Uh, I supervise Rinconado Water Treatment Plant as well as the operation of the Campbell Well Field. I'm a backup supervisor for this facility. Okay, so uh, this first major process is called what? This is the membrane filtration process. And um, this process consists of, of 120, 112 cells. And a cell is one of these guys right here? So we have 112 of these. Right. And in each one of these cells, we have um, 6,300 little membrane fibers. They're hollow fibers. And um, they're designed to obviously filter out um, the particulates up to 0.1 micron. 0.1 micron. So now we're getting down to much, much smaller than a human hair, right? Yeah, three, 300 times smaller than a human hair. Okay. Very, very, very small. So the water, sh sh just point where the water's coming from and does it go through all of these or one at a time or does water just continually flow? How does that work? But basically the, inside the, the 6,300 um, membranes, it's like a straw. Mm -hmm. So the water comes out from the outside of the straw and goes into the inside of the straw where the water is collected. And that's where the filtration process happens. But it's, a, it's, a, um, it's not a direct path. It actually, there's like small fissures in the membrane that allow the water to kind of travel through and eventually get captured. And then the water comes out of the membrane, uh, treated at the first, first stage. So it's, is it starting down here and going up or does it start at the top and go down or how's the water flow? Yes, yeah, so the first direction. Yeah. And, and basically then it's collected and then it goes to the next process. But to kind of give you kind of a, um, an idea of how much material in there is, each one of these cells has five, about 540 square feet of, of membrane material. And if you were to take each one of these strands out and out of all 112 of them and put them length to length, it would span the entire length of California. <laughs> so you're, you're making the point that these are very small membranes and there's a whole bunch of them in each of these cells. Right. We have a lot of surface area that we're treating with. Okay. Let's move on to the next step, which is? Uh, the next step is the uh, inner process storage tank. Okay, so we're going to go right back outside, uh, where the, the water's going to go outside, and you're going to tell us why. Why is the water going outside? <laughs> so we've now uh, stepped outside of the process building, Steve, and uh, this, this pipe over here is where the water is coming from, right? And then where's it going? Right. Um, it's going into this 225,000 gallon stainless steel inner process uh, water storage tank. From this storage tank, it goes into the RO transfer pumps and then goes into our uh, cartridge filters. The cartridge filters have, are 20 micron uh, cartridge filters in there, and their, their, their main role is just to keep particulates from entering the RO process because the RO membranes in themselves are very, very uh, sensitive and it can be damaged very easily by any small particle uh, that enters that process. And what were the RO pumps for? 
This is just a transfer pump um, that transfers from the inner, uh, inner process storage tank to the RO process. Okay, and these pipes are uh, fiberglass, looks like fiberglass pipes, and they're colored this really nice green. What, what's the deal with the pretty colors out here? Is just because it looks nice? Well, it does look nice, but uh, there's actually a method to the mayhem is uh, the color of the piping indicates the, the process that it's going through. Um, this is showing an inner process uh, uh, within this facility. For example, at the Rincon Auto Water Treatment Plant, the water that, uh, by treated water, typically the piping is uh, bright blue. Uh, waste streams are brown, so there, there is a color code to piping. All right, we've turned the corner. We're around on the other side now, and we're back with Crystal. And Crystal, I recognize these green green pipes. That means we're in her process, right? We're in the middle. And what is what is this contraption that we have here? All right, so what's going on here is from the inner process tank, and we've done some pre-filtering before RO. Now we're gonna take that water and we're gonna boost the pressure really high. So these are 450 horsepower pumps that can boost the pressure to go to the RO system. And what is RO system? Just real quickly, what does RO stand for? Sure, uh, RO is the center of our universe here. It's reverse osmosis. This is where we push the water through such fine um, filters that uh, we clean out even the, the minerals, the salts out of the water. Okay, and we'll get to see those in a second. So uh, how many of these pumps do we have that we're looking at? Sure, we have three of them, and they can each pull about uh, 2,500 gallons per minute, uh, which is a total of almost 10 million gallons of water that they can push through at once. So sometimes will all three be working at the same time, or is it vary? Yes, they, they would all three be working and went at higher capacities. Um, we're, our total rated capacity is about 8 MGD out the door. Millions, millions of gallons per day. Right, millions of gallons per day. That's a lot of water. Okay, so we're going to go back inside, right? Finally? Okay, we're going to go back inside and see the reverse osmosis system. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're back inside the process building with Crystal, and we're looking at a bunch of RO cylinders. Is that what they're called? Well, RO modules. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we were outside where we were boosting the pressure really high, right? So now it's going to this RO rack of modules. And what happens is the water comes in through uh, the bottom and it goes into these modules, which as you can see are really long. So uh, it's a little hard for us to visualize what's in those modules, but you got one right here that's got a cutout. Tell me about this. Sure, so this is an actual RO membrane. The ones in your houses are much smaller, but this one's quite bigger. It, what it is is it's one sheet that's rolled uh, tightly and wound, and uh, the water has to flow in a spiral manner uh, through it and get filtered along the way. Um, and as the water spirals down to the center, the clean water goes to the center channel, um, and the reject water is then uh, removed from the outside. And so the water has to go th spiral through those plastic membranes to the center, where then the finished uh, product water comes here. And what we'll do then is we'll take the waste from it and we'll run it through a second time, through a second stage, to get a little bit more uh, water out of it. And, um, and essentially then we have reverse osmosis water, which is highly purified, almost distilled water quality. Uh, it's used for um, bottled water industries like Desante and Aquafina. They also use RO membranes. So this is like the gold standard for water treatment pretty much? That's right. This is great new uh, technology that's now being used for recycled water throughout the country. So um, we're really excited to have it here in, in at the water district and, and to showcase it. This is one of the largest uh, advanced recycled water treatment plants in the state and the largest in Northern California. Great, so we, uh, we we're real proud of that. Um, so uh, this is, you, you hear people have reverse osmosis systems in their home, is it similar to this, just in a bigger scale? Yes, exactly, it's very similar to the reverse osmosis you can put install in your house. Okay, Crystal, we're both holding something. I have no idea what the heck this is. It's a plastic uh, ball. It looks like a toy, cat toy. We have cat toys. Why do we have cat toys at right. the recycled so, water plant? Uh, 
these aren't actually cat toys. Okay, I, I stand corrected. But they, this, these tanks behind us are full of these um, cat toys, if you want to call them that. What these are is this is a decarbonation tower, and when the water comes from the RO system, it's so uh, purified, and we've removed all the minerals, and what's left behind is a lot of carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide it cr creates an acid uh, that can be acidic to the pipelines um, so, downstream of here. So it sort of is like soda water? It's the, got that kind of carbonation in it? Right, yeah, exactly. So what these are is, uh, what happens is the water is pumped into these, uh, into these tanks and it cascades down through these balls. And at the same time, this air blower blows air into it. And so we have this very frothy air-like um, happening in there with these balls. And it, 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 what it does is it off-gasses the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So these are decarbonation towers, which uh, makes the water less acidic. Okay, I never would have guessed. I would have thought this was full of some just liquid and they're full of these. Do you have any idea how many there are in there? Boxes. In, I mean, the boxes that came in were probably about, you know, this big and they were stacked, you know, taller than us. So when they went in there, there was quite a few. <laughs> okay, so anything else we, we wanted to point out in this area? Okay, so, after, so now we've, we've gone in the building on membranes, we've left the building, then we go back in the building for our ORO, we leave the building for these decarb towers, and now we're going to go back inside the building. <laughs> the water's gonna get tired going in and out and in and out. Okay, so we're back in the process building. I'm here with Steve and uh, this, these blue pipes or what the water is now coming in from the uh, decarbonation towers. Right. And then uh, they're coming in through here to these, these cylinders, these modules, they look like uh, something from a science fiction movie. What are these? It, it really does. Actually, these are our UV cells. Um, there are six of them, um, and there's two of them in series per each cell. Um, there's 40 UV lamps. Um, they're uh, low, uh, low pressure, high yield UV lamps. So show me where the UV lamps are. There's 40 of them. Where are they? What they're, they're doing is they're spanning the length of each cell, and these are the connections for each, each lamp. So how, they're like eight feet long or something, a big lamp that's eight feet long? Right, yeah, they go from, from end to end of the cell. And what the water passes through it in this high intensity UV um, light, it's kind of like sunlight. Um, what it's doing, it's disinfecting the water. So this is the third, just, if anything managed to get through that RO system, this is really gonna zap it. Uh, it's gonna really zap it, okay. yeah. And this, this takes a lot of power too, right, all these lamps? Oh yes, yeah, so, I mean you can just imagine you know keeping the lights on in the house all day long. This is this is you know much much more uh, uh, intensive. Yes. All right. So you you said the water goes through both of these. They they go through both two of these cylinders, and then there's six trains like this. Right. Right. If you we follow the, the the water, it comes into here, it comes in, and then basically takes a loop into this. It started the, the next one. So basically these are in series. Okay, we're not running in parallel. So it's, if you were to think about it, it's actually one long uh, unit, but they just do it in this way to conserve on space. All right. And I can see that at the end of this series, we have a, now a lighter blue pipe that's going up to up higher. And uh, where's that going? After it leaves here, um, basically the water, water is done being treated and it goes to our process storage tank. Okay, and we're going to see that process storage tank. But before we do, because we're going to leave, I want to ask about the purple pipes that are at, in, this, in the roof here. What are, what are those purple pipes all about? Purple pipe, as I was explaining earlier, about the different uh, colors have different um, uh, designations. Purple pipe means recycled water. So one of the unique uh, attributes of this facility is all the sprinkler system for fire suppression, it, we're actually using recycled water for that rather than a potable water source. So we're, we're practicing what we preach, we're using the water that we're making here, right? Absolutely. Yeah, if we can save it every drop, that's, that's what we're trying to do. All right. So, and that's why I wore a purple shirt today, because I knew we're talking about recycled water. Recycled water ends up in purple pipes. Right. I, I wish I would have worn, worn my purple shirt. You didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. All right. Let's go outside. Okay, I'm back here with Sam, and we are at the product water storage tank, right? Yes. How, and this is a monstrosity. What? How many gallons of water does this thing hold? Yeah, this is our product water storage tank. It's a stainless steel welded tank, and it holds about 2.25 million gallons of water. Okay, that's that's, uh, and this facility will produce up to 8 million gallons. So this is. It, 
it's, it'll hold about 2.2.5 .2 million gallons of that product water. Yes, and what we're going to use it, even though the plant capacity is 8 MGD a day, it doesn't mean you're flowing out 8 MGD at a certain time. So this is our holding storage tank before we send the water to San Jose Water Pollution Control Plant. Okay, and uh, I, you're not going to let us cr crawl in? This looks fun. I want to go in, but you won't let us go in there? No, we're not allowed to cross even the plane. You can't cross the plane. You have to be properly trying to confine the space. Okay, it's a confined space. Fine, but it does look fun. You have uh, a dome ceiling here. Um, so uh, it, this is all stainless steel, like the, that other one, right? So it's going to stay clean? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's clean. It's softer. Uh, when we start blending this water with the water pollution control plant to water, we'll feed chlorine, chlorine and ammonia to maintain this function re residual across the pipeline. Okay, and you just mentioned something we haven't uh, really covered yet is that this water that's produced from this facility will be blended with water produced at the water pollution control plant? That's correct, to lower uh, the TDS, the total dissolved solids, uh, because our plant uh, uh, on average will uh, produce about 40 uh, parts of TDS, but theirs will be about 700 parts of T TDS. So we blend that water to lower the, the TDS amount. Okay, so our the water that's coming from this plant is very, very clean, is what you're saying. Yes, and, it and it doesn't really need to be that clean for the industrial uses and the landscaping uses. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I mean, uh, our water is about 40 TDS. Uh, just to give you a better idea, uh, drinking water TDS has about 250 parts. 250 parts. So the water produced from this plant, basically, if you're talking about total dissolved solids, yes. is actually cleaner than drinking water. That's correct. Okay. At least in that aspect, it's it's cleaner, but it's being blended with water that's currently today going out for recycled as recycled water. That's correct. Yeah, they, they use it for recycled water purposes, uh, for irrigation, uh, for uh, you know, for cooling towers and all that kind of stuff, for golf courses, for irrigation. All right. Thank you for showing us the tank. Okay. So, Crystal, we're almost at the end of the line here. We're going to ship our water off to the South Bay Water Recycling, which is right across the way here. But before we do that, the water's going to come from our tank, and what are we going to do to it? Right, so there's only one step left, and that's to add some uh, chlorine and ammonia to make chloramine that maintains a residual in the pipelines from here so that uh, we don't have any too much bio growth back in the pipelines. Okay, and uh, so this blue pipe is going to go right around where we are and to what's called the transmission pump station. Right. And uh, that's where it's going to go to the customers. It's going to blend, right? Then they blend it with the water from uh, the water pollution control plant and then they're going to send it to the customers, right? That's correct. So our water leaves the product water storage tank, goes right over here to uh, this pump station where it's blended, like you said, and then goes to the customers. Okay. So let's talk about what the future holds. This uh, facility is producing, we we're talking about very high quality water. Uh, it's being blended today for non-potable purposes, for industrial landscaping uses. But what is the potential for a plant like this? Sure, so uh, this is an advanced recycled water treatment plant and we've set it up in a way that we'll be able to do some studies and, and, and treat or test new technologies that will treat the water even further so that we could then use it for indirect potable reuse or direct potable reuse depending on which way we decide to go. So what, what does that mean? I hear potable, so I know it's drinkable. What, so what does that mean? What would we actually, where would the water actually go? Right, so right now what we're looking at is uh, maybe increasing the treatment that's at this plant to include advanced oxidation techniques and a higher pressure of UV disinfection. And then what we would do is we would send that water to possibly our recharge ponds where it would percolate through the ground and eventually be used by well users throughout the county. And that, is that uh, being used elsewhere? Is that process already happening? Well, that process happens naturally all through the United States. I mean, every wastewater plant in America outfalls into a, a river where downstream there might be an intake for a water treatment plant. So in addition to the groundwater recharge option, we're also looking at the possibility of piping the advanced recycled water to our raw water pipelines that then feed some of our drinking water treatment plants where it would be treated to drinking water standards and sent to distribution. So. You, you obviously have a lot of confidence that the technology is there, that we can produce water that's clean enough to add to our drinking water supply 
uh, th in the ways that you described? Oh, definitely. You know, the experts today think that these technologies are actually creating a product that's better than what's coming out of our drinking water treatment plants. Wow. And what, why is that important to our water supply? Well, how is that going to help us? We have a lot of other water supplies, so why is that uh, an option that we're looking at? Well, uh, we actually don't have a lot of other water supplies. The, the imported water to the county and the local supplies is pretty much maxed out. So we are looking at other alternatives such as recycled water to supplement our flow and our demand here in the county. So it'll help us meet our future demand as there's growth and more water is used with more, a larger population. So that's how we're going to meet our, fill the gaps, right? Exactly. That coupled with conservation techniques, water efficiency, then we'll be able to meet future demands. And right now, we show that we're going to have to increase our, our, our capacity to produce recycled water um, by an additional 20,000 acre feet within the next 10 years. Great. And uh, I want to thank you, Crystal, and your team uh, for allowing us to walk through your facility, even though you're still in construction. I know we're a bit of a pest to be walking around while you're still trying to finish the plant. But uh, thank you all. Thank your team. And uh, you, you, this is really exciting. It's the first uh, new treatment plant the Water District has had since 1987, right? That's correct. Yeah, we're very excited for this plant to be finished and get operational. Well, thank you for joining us on this tour. Uh, when it does open, we will have opportunities for the general public to come and tour this facility. So keep your eye out and uh, hopefully you'll be able to take a tour like we did when it's all up and running and we're actually producing water. Thank you very much.